Hi, everybody. It's Leslie with the New Mexico Small Business Development Center, and I'm happy to invite you to today's webinar with Dr. Marvin Lozano. He is he's going to be giving us a talk on um, accessing uh, resources, financial resources for your small business. I'm excited because he's going to be presenting it bilingual. Also, if you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A and Dr. Lozano will pick up your questions uh, again bilingually throughout the entire webinar. I want to remind everyone that the New Mexico Small Business Development Center, it strongly encourages New Mexico small businesses to be aware of cybersecurity risks and take uh, precautions to protect your data, especially from ransomware. With all that being said, I will turn it over to Dr. Lozano. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, so happy to be with you this morning uh, to be talking about a topic that's very important to small businesses. And that is, as you see on the slide, accessing money from banks, alternative lenders, and SBA for your small business while surviving uh, COVID-19, uh, which is still upon us. Uh, in Spanish, uh, es acceso a dinero de los bancos, prestamistas alternativos, y SBA para mi pequeña empresa mientras sobrevivo COVID-19. So uh, I will be doing this in, in uh, a bilingual mode, uh, meaning uh, Spanish and English. That's the intent is to deliver this in our in our uh, state that is a truly mi uh, multicultural state. So um, feel free to ask questions as, as Leslie uh, commented in the beginning. Next. Uh, bueno, yo soy um, uh, el Dr. Lozano. Um, I am Dr. Lozano. Um, my background just briefly, is so you understand who this presenter is that's, that's here before you today. And I'll say this in Spanish also. Uh, is I, I was, um, uh, I studied business administration at Arizona State University, um, master's at the U of A and a doctorate here at, uh, at UNM. So I, I've seen a variety of ways to approach business and this is an interest to me, always training and teaching. So I Dr. Lozano, estudié en uh, el estado de Arizona, tomé la bachelor's y también la maestría y aquí tomé un doctorado con uh, UNM eh, uh, en uh, educación y aparte de eso soy consultador de negocios pequeños. Gracias. Uh, next. Um, the idea here is to make you aware also uh, that the SBDC offers many, many different workshops. Please go to the website, the state website, and you'll see a listing there. And I also participate with another workshop bilingual with Dr. Michaela Rivera where we do, um, uh, 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 she deals primarily with the mental care since she's a psychologist and talks about those issues. And I talk a bit on how you can uh, continue to protect your employees and, and, and your clients. Um, so lots of trainings, okay? Mucho, muchos uh, cursos que tenemos uh, uh, para ustedes que, que los tomen con el SBDC vayan um, al SBDC localizado En el, este estado hay 19 oficinas y en el internet pueden ver dónde están localizadas, que les ayuden, aprovechen ese entrenamiento para ustedes y su negocio. Next. Uh, the objectives then are to allow you all to, uh, to have some understanding. We're not going to cover everything, okay? But it's to give you some basic understanding, which I've outlined in resources that will help you. In addition to my academic training, I, I have uh, uh, training as a commercial lender. I was with uh, Chase um, Bank for, for many, many years as a commercial lender. And currently, I'm a consultant uh, in New Mexico with many small businesses and alternative lenders. So uh, I can help you. And that's the objective here. El objetivo es para asistir a ustedes, entender cómo son los recursos para que sigan um, Aprendiendo que está disponible para ustedes y también para que eh, sepan las diferencias ¿no? de los bancos, alternative uh, lenders, como les dicen, la prestamistas alternativas y el SBA. Next. 
Uh, so I've, I've broken this into uh, three, three, er three themes, if you will, because I think we have limited time, right? But I want you to understand these are very important. And when we were talking about putting this workshop together, um, one of the things I thought was very important is that small business people understand how to access capital, uh, whether it's the banks, whether it's alternative lenders or SBA, there's a method that you use to prepare yourself, okay? So that's one. Number two is how do you sustain your business? Getting your funds is one thing, but be aware that in this pandemic area, era rather, if you don't conform to what that funding is, you will be required to pay it back. It may come across as a grant, but it can turn into a loan. And three is, is how do you apply for these resources that are out there, right? En español es para decirles que, mira, son las temas tres. Número uno es cómo pueden accesar capital para su negocio pequeño. Eh, número dos es cómo pueden sostener su negocio y crecerlo. Uh, y que tenga, bueno, que sigue eh, operando, ¿no? Porque si no, pues, ¿qué, es ¿qué les sirve el capital? Tienen que utilizarlo para crecer y tener buen éxito. Uh, número tres es cómo pueden solicitar los recursos financieros, porque hay muchos, pero todos requieren que ustedes entren preparados y para eso vamos a hablar de esto. Ok, next. Ok, uh, I'm going to flip now, as you can see, it's in Spanish and then in English. So I'll start in Spanish and then I'll cover the same topic in, in English for you. Ok, so one, número uno. Uh, los conceptos básicos de acceso a capital, de eso vamos a hablar, ¿ok? Y en inglés es Basics of Accessing Capital. Esto es la información que todos deben de saber. Yo lo sé, ¿por qué? Porque yo fui prestamista y muchos años y yo sé cómo analizamos lo que quieren ustedes como negocios pequeños en forma de capital. So, so I, I can talk to this topic very carefully because apart from my academic training, I was a commercial loan officer, executive account officer, working primarily with small businesses in Arizona and New Mexico uh, for many, many years. And, and there is a methodology here. There's a way that you prepare yourself. So when you go prepared, the likelihood you get that capital is in your favor, okay? And so I'm trying to help you here understand that so you go better prepared, okay? Uh, next. Uh, bueno, en español, ¿qué son las cuatro cosas que pueden ustedes hacer para prepararse? Okay? Número uno, ¿cómo está su crédito? Si usted tiene buen crédito, pues va a ver que le va a ir mejor. Si no tiene buen crédito porque tuvo problemas Vamos a decir que alguien se enfermó en la familia y no pudieron hacer los pagos. Pues vaya y explíqueselo a la persona eh, que sea en el banco, que sea prestamista alternativa o que sea con el SBA. Si ustedes piden capital, ellos quieren saber cómo está su crédito. Número dos, ¿cómo es su flujo de efectivo? Aquí prepárense. Ustedes mismos pueden ir preparados con un flujo de efectivo que proyectan unos seis meses. Unos seis meses, ¿ok? Vamos a decir, ahorita es el primero de julio. Entonces, julio, agosto, octubre y así, ¿ok? ¿Qué espera usted en forma de efectivo de, que va a entrar a su negocio? ¿Qué no va a ser los gastos? Número tres, la garantía. Eh, como todo el mundo, eh, no de, de cualquier persona o negocio, vamos a decir, si es banco, es negocio. Si es uh, prestamista alternativa, es negocio. El SBA es federal, pero ellos también tienen condiciones, ¿ok? La garantía, ¿qué va a ofrecer usted en cambio por los fondos que quiere? ¿Va a ser maquinaria? ¿Va a ser uh, su casa? Uh, ¿Va a ser uh, otro edificio? ¿Qué va a ser? Piénselo bien. Y número cuatro, ¿qué son las condiciones? Uh, ahorita las condiciones han sido difíciles, ¿no? Por el pandemia. Pero se pueden preparar ustedes y decir, ¿sabes qué? La industria bajó, pero todo está mejorando ahora que que están abriendo. Yo leí en el periódico esta mañana, esta mañana, no en el, en el Wall Street, eh, aquí en el Journal, uh, eh, que ya están abriendo los, los restaurantes especialmente. Si usted tiene un restaurante, entonces eso le va a ir bien. So the four things that I was talking about here that I'll repeat in English are the four basic concepts, if you will, 
that any borrower needs to know. As a former lender, commercial lender with Chase, uh, I learned this because I was sent to school to learn them before making any business loan. And the idea was that I understand when a small business or a medium-sized business or a larger business came to our bank for a loan, I should look at four basic things in any loan. One is what's the applicant's credit, okay? What, number two, what is their cash flow? Three, what's their collateral? And four, what's the conditions, okay? So briefly, let's cover each one. Number one is your credit. So here the idea is very straightforward. Uh, there's usually a credit report with your permission and your permission is given once you sign that application, okay, for credit, uh, that they will check to see how your previous credit is. And here I encourage you as a consultant today in New Mexico uh, with alternative lenders, what I tell applicants is if you don't have perfect credit, uh, maybe you've had some dings because in the past there were some medical issues with a family member or things were just hard given the pandemic, right? The best thing you can do is explain to the lender how you're handling those things because it, it's, it's another part of credit that isn't necessarily explained, but character plays into this. And so what they're looking at to see is what kind of character you reflect. Uh, once once I, I remember here, I, I try to share stories as I go along. I remember I was actually in the bank and I had a professional athlete come and apply with his head uh, actually turned down. And, and he said, listen, uh, I need to borrow some money. I need a small line of credit for my business. Okay, I sell some products given I'm a professional athlete. Uh, I can do that. And I said, well, tell me about uh, your credit, right? Number one, what's your credit like? And he said to me, my credit's terrible because when I got my professional contract, a lot of my family members thought it was their professional contract too. So they started borrowing, getting credit cards and I wasn't aware of it. He explained it to me uh, in a very straightforward manner. And I felt he was showing a lot of character in doing that and we were able to put together uh, some funding for him, uh, and, I, and I felt very comfortable with him. Okay, that's credit. Uh, okay, so in, in terms of cash flow, uh, that is, as I was saying earlier in Spanish, the second thing that any lender is going to look at. Okay, two things here. If you are a startup, project out six months of cash flow, and I will be sharing that with you in the next couple of slides. You'll see what I mean by cash flow. But it's not necessary to project out several years. Sometimes you'll hear that said either in the news media or on the internet. And, and here's what I remember as a banker very clearly, and I think it still applies in my conversations with many lenders, and that's that you, know, you can prepare a beautiful Excel projected uh, cash flow for two years, but how do we know what'll happen in two years? We don't. So the important thing is to project out at least six months, maybe a year, but be specific and add a narrative. Explain your cash flow. Why do you expect revenue in the next six months to go up? Why do you expect expenses to remain the same? Go that extra mile. It'll show you show initiative. You analyze what you're gonna do and you're serious about that, that money that you wanna get. Uh, number three is collateral. Um, this is what you put up in exchange for any funding. Uh, and sometimes folks say to me, well, yeah, but it's a grant. But be aware, uh, if you read the fine line, a lot of the grants that are out there right now, federally funded grants have a clause that say, if you do not meet following uh, regulations when you get this grant, we will convert it to a loan. And then you have to make payments to pay it back. So the collateral is what you offer in exchange for the funds you get one way or the other, okay? And it may be the equity in your house, it may be a car, it may be machinery, something that you're putting up in exchange for what you want, okay? Four is the conditions. Well, clearly we know COVID, right, is part of what's impacted all businesses in the past year. So here, what you wanna do is zero in how your business, right, and if you're not in business, maybe you're a startup, how your industry has been impacted. And here the idea is, 
you know, do a little bit of research, you know, go online, look up similar businesses, look up the industry and see, uh, I was sharing in Spanish uh, above under conditions, condiciones, that what we know uh, is, is that, you know, because I'm always trying to stay informed locally and, and federally, right? Here I've got the Wall Street, not the Wall Street Journal, although I read that also in the morning, but I've got the Albuquerque Journal. And there's an article on how today restaurants have more capacity because, you know, the governor has determined that at this point enough folks have been vaccinated. So, um, so th this is good, but those are conditions for restaurant owners, okay? Uh, next. Bueno, Español, esto es parte que usted va a preparar uh, cuando prepara su lujo de efectivo, okay? Lo que puede hacer en la, en la página de preparar su flujo de efectivo, vamos a decir que usted tiene un, una página en blanco, okay? El va a proyectar usted seis meses de flujo de efectivo empezando. En este lado, ¿ok? Puede poner estimación antes de iniciar. Aquí pone usted eh, qué espera tener usted en, invierto en el eh, que va a invertir, eh, que va a entrar, vamos a poner en su negocio, invertir en su negocio antes de empezar. Eh, primero tengo dinero disponible a la mano. Esto puede ser que usted tiene una cuenta de cheques ya que abrió en su banco, ¿ok? Porque necesita tener una cuenta de cheques para escribir cheques para hacer sus pagos, ¿no? ¿Qué es la cantidad que tiene usted disponible antes de empezar? Si ya tiene un préstamo, si tiene una línea de crédito, si tiene ayuda federal, cualquier cosa, aquí pone los fondos antes de empezar y luego de ahí puede empezar proyectando mes 1, 2, 3, 4, perdón, 5, 6. Y si tiene otro dinero que alguien se lo ofreció, vamos a decir alguien en su familia, su tío, uh, lo que sea, su suegro, eh, aquí pone ese dinero también porque es dinero que usted va a invertir en su negocio antes de empezar. ¿Ok? So what I was saying in, uh, in, in Spanish is, is that here, uh, the reason I put this up was to share with you is that, remember, uh, the idea in, in uh, flujo de efectivo or cash flow is you're going to project out, you're going to project out at least six months of the revenue or sales you expect to generate in the future, okay, going forward, okay? And here, what you want to do is, is look at what you have now before you be begin your projections. That's why you call it pre-startup. If it's an existing business, you can still do that, okay? Because when you go into a lender, you're going at a specific point in time. Let's say it's July 1st. Well, your projection is from July 1st for the next six months or for the year, but you still need to do that pre-startup estimate on July 1st, 2021, right? And here's where you put, hey, this is the cash on hand I have, right? Where do you put it? Again, you're doing your, your projection here, but over here, you do a column, and on the column, you say, uh, cash on hand. What do I have on hand in the bank? Do I have a loan or a line of credit? If you don't, don't put down, but sometimes folks get that money in advance, okay? Um, also, any other cash, maybe you have a relative that's invested in your idea, maybe they invested in your ongoing business, and you've got money from them. So you have a note between you and them, okay? Then this is where you put that amount of money. This is important because it, sh it shows that you're putting some type of investment, a financial investment, okay, into your business before you start up. And that's important to any lender. They want to know that you're serious about what you want to do that you've thought this through, okay? Next. Okay, so just as you're gonna list on these, this page, okay, projections, then uh, over here you have that one column that I showed previously, the previous slide, which you have on hand. Below what you do, title something called cash paid out or efectivo pagar. I'll do this in Spanish, then in English. Aquí va a prepararlo en su página, ¿ok? Lo puede ser en lápiz, no tiene que ser en computador, ¿ok? ¿Qué son las compras de mercancía 
que ya ha comprado usted en su negocio antes de empezarlo. ¿Ok? ¿Qué ha gastado usted en, uh, en uh, aquí le decimos compra de capital? Puede ser que uh, compró una maquinaria, que compró eh, un camión, que compró algo que tiene value, que debe de poner usted, que ya gastó fondos, ¿ok? Y luego, como andamos en el pandemic, ¿ok? Debe de poner usted, si ha invertido, por ejemplo, en uh, suministros de limpieza, ¿qué tiene? Eh, y si pagó algo de renta, sea un depósito que les tuvo que poner usted en el edificio o en teléfono. La cosa es tener algo para enseñar. Mira, como, como en, en la página que le estaba enseñando, ¿no? En la página. que eh, Mira, tengo aquí, aparte de lo que proyecté, proyecté seis meses, tengo lo que ya voy a poner en el negocio, lo que tengo a, disponible. Y luego abajo, ¿qué tengo? Que lo que voy a poner yo en... Uh, Okay, ya gasté. So what I was saying here was, was think of uh, this as you have uh, a column before your projected cash flow, okay? And this column was like the previous slide I showed, label the top of it, um, what you have available before you start this business, or if it's an existing business before you get this new amount of money that you want to get for your business. Okay, you've got this column, Okay, you label it, what you have available, like the previous slide showed you, what were those things? Remember, it was what's the cash you have available? Okay, do you have a loan? Do you have a line of credit? And then uh, do you have funds from somewhere else? Right below that, you label this cash paid out. And here, have you bought inventory for your business? Many small businesses take it for granted and they never share this with a lender. You want to bet, put your best foot forward. So put down that you've already spent money on some merchandise and put that total amount in there. Uh, if you bought some equipment or you have a truck, uh, maybe it's a building, uh, I, I don't know, it depends. Each, each business uh, is gonna be different. The request is gonna be different. But if you have something you're putting forward, uh, um, it's important to put it here. Remember where I was talking about collateral? This is where a lender will look to see, hey, you know, what, what kind of collateral may be available for this loan request? And even if it's a grant, you want to say, hey, look, I've already in invested in my business. So you put a value there for what the market value is for that particular item. Uh, also cleaning supplies. I was saying in Spanish that what we have in this, in this day and age is many times, um, Uh, you know, I, I've gone in many stores. I've traveled throughout New Mexico. I, I uh, came back from uh, Las Cruces in, in, uh, in Demi, New Mexico last week, and I was visiting small businesses on behalf uh, of an uh, alternative lender where I consult. And, uh, and basically what I found was many times I'd walk into these businesses to meet the owners, and they would have cleaning supplies for sale, right? They would say, hey, as you come in, to the store, please sanitize your hands, okay? Uh, and if you wanna buy some cleaning supplies, we've got them here for you, for your own business. That has value. Put that in there to show what that value is. Uh, and then briefly, rent, telephone, anything else that you have paid out um, that has value. The intent here is remember preparation. So you want to go into anyone you're asking funds from prepared, all right? And, and this will be very impressive because I guarantee you, a lot of folks don't do this. And so the difference between those that don't do it and those that do uh, matters, okay? It really does. And, and the, the folks on the other side of the table will, will take and be impressed by you doing this, okay? Next. Uh, Okay, here is the flujo de efectivo or cash flow. So I'll do this in Spanish, then in English, okay? Bueno, aquí está el flujo de efectivo y como ven, son seis meses. Si usted quiere proyectar o si le piden, es posible que le dicen, ah, ¿sabes qué? No, nosotros en el banco preferimos un año. Nosotros, el prestamista alternativo pre, prefiere 12 meses. El SBA, en este caso de este programa, preferimos 12 meses. No hay problema. 
Porque aquí, si usted proyecta seis meses, entonces sigue proyectando. ¿Ve? Que es mes siete, ocho, nueve, once, doce. ¿Ok? Pero esto es lo que le asiste a prepararse. Eh, como ven el lado uh, de mano derecha para ustedes, izquierda para mí. ¿Qué es lo que tiene a la mano? Efectivo en caja le decimos aquí. ¿Ok? ¿Qué es lo que tiene? ¿Ok? Y, y luego abajo, ¿qué espera recibir en su negocio? El mes, el primero mes, ¿qué van a ser las ventas que va a tener usted? El segundo mes, yo puse enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo y junio, ¿ok? Pero usted pone los meses que le aplica. Si está empezando en julio, pone julio. Y luego pone agosto y septiembre, ¿ok? Eso, es, eso se puede cambiar. Es flexible, ¿ok? Pero uh, siguiendo con uh, colecciones de cuenta por cobra, ¿qué es eso? Bueno, eso es si usted vende en crédito. Es posible que usted le dice a un cliente, bueno, yo te vendo esta maquinaria, págame en 30 días, págame en 45 días. Entonces esto es una cuenta por cobrar y tiene que reflejar, porque acuérdense, esta es como la sangre de un cuerpo. Es cuando entra para hacer los pagos. ¿Ok? Eh, ¿Qué está disponible? Es efectivo. Eh, sigue préstamo y otro, otro uh, efectivo. Eh, y esto es importante porque usted quiere reflejar cómo va entrando dinero de las ventas, qué más va entrando a su negocio. ¿Ok? Y luego tiene un total. Recibos de efectivo total. So what I was saying in Spanish is make time to project out a minimum of six months of cash flow for your business. And, and you know, you may encounter where the lender, because you want to present yourself to a bank, alternative lender, the SBA, uh, they may tell you a year. But if you do it for six months, that's what I'm trying to do is get you started here. Then you just continue the process for six more months, okay? But I've used January, February, March, and so on, okay? But these are interchangeable. If I'm doing this today, obviously I want to be current. So I'm going to say July, August, September, October, November, December. And then what I do is I say, okay, in July, instead of January, in July, this is what I have as cash on hand. And then I say, okay, as I go forward, you know, in July, what do I expect my cash sales to be? You see that below under cash receipts? And I say, if I sell on credit, then what are my receivables? When will they come in? Better said, okay? So, for example, let's say you expect to make a sale of a machine in July. Maybe two machines, maybe three. But if the client is not going to pay you till February or March, In a cash flow, you put down when you actually expect to receive the money, okay? So you would put it when you expect to receive it because as I said in Spanish, think of the cash flow as blood uh, entering a business, just like your body needs blood to operate, okay? And to succeed, a business needs what? Needs cash to succeed, okay? So it parallels the idea there, okay? Um, returning to, to cash receipts, uh, you know, here you also may have a line of credit or other cash. I, I worked, in fact, in the past several days with a small business that came to me and, and said in, in, on a Monday, hey, I, I need, I need $10,000 because uh, uh, I, I noticed that I'm back on my property taxes and I need to pay those. I've been given it a, a deadline. Uh, so I worked with the alternative lender to, to increase their line of credit from what it was to another $10,000. And so if they were doing this today, they were funded two days ago, okay? They would put down the line of credit that they received, which was $10,000. Actually, it was an increase of their existing line of credit, but they would have more funds available, okay? So they would put those funds down, okay? So it just depends on your business. If you don't have that, don't put it down. And this is your total cash receipts. Next. Uh, th th this is very important. Uh, I, I think this is more a word of encouragement. Esto es para, para motivarlos más que nada, okay? En español y luego inglés. Es no ames lo que eres, sino lo que puedes llegar a ser. La idea aquí es sigue mejorándote para tener buen éxito, okay? 
uh, what I'm saying here is uh, don't be satisfied. The word is don't love, but I, I, I think in, in terms of business, it's interchangeable with satis don't be satisfied what you are, you know, but what you can become. So if you started that little business and you've been running into a lot of obstacles, um, you know, look to the future. You know, what can you become? Stay positive. Okay, that's the idea here. Next. Okay, aquí entonces es la segunda uh, tema, okay, que es que, ¿cómo va a sostener usted el negocio? Porque eh, es importante um, que ustedes sepan, uh, y aquí puse cinco cosas, eh, es que no necesita tener una idea completa, uh, completa nueva, mejor dicho, completa sí, pero completa nueva no para empezar un negocio. Eh, es que hay muchos negocios, vamos a decir, por ejemplo, que son restaurantes. Hay muchos en el estado. Eh, pero si usted tiene uno, lo que es importante aquí es cómo va a ser el negocio de usted diferente. Si va a vender a uh, usted comida mexicana, ¿por qué es diferente de los otros restaurantes mexicanos? ¿Okay? Eso es importante notar. ¿Okay? Y ponerle por escrito. All right, porque él va a prepararse para explicárselo a la persona que aprueba, va a aprobar los fondos. Eh, número dos, uh, no necesita mucho dinero para empezar un negocio. Vamos a decir que ustedes ya están operando. Porque el clase este o el, lo que estamos hablando es recursos, ¿no? De capital. Si ya está operando, entonces no necesita mucho dinero. O es posible que sí necesita mucho dinero. La cosa es ir preparado para sostenerse, ¿ok? Eh, pero cuando va a empezar un negocio como empresario, la importante cosa de número dos es tener la idea claramente en la mente y poder explicárselo a la gente que va a hacer el préstamo. Ok, aquí eso cuenta mucho, ¿ok? Eh, entonces... Um, Uh, la cosa número uh, tres que tenemos aquí es use lo que ya sabe en su experiencia de entrenamiento. Eh, muchas veces ustedes es posible que tienen mucha experiencia uh, y en, en un negocio como empleado. Eso tiene valor para la persona que le está haciendo un préstamo. Entonces explíqueselo bien, okay? que si sí tiene experiencia o es posible, posible que tomó un clase. Yo, yo, a, a, Fui profesor de negocio de emprendimiento muchos años aquí en, en, en Albuquerque con colegios y universidades. Tuve clases. Ese, eso cuenta también. Eh, cuatro y cinco. No necesito una página de 20 páginas o un, un plan de 20 páginas. Y no necesita comprar un negocio para empezar. Estas son cosas muy importantes. ¿okay? En, en, en causa de un plan de negocio, lo que es importante es ser claro en lo que quiere hacer. Y si va a ser porque quiero un préstamo, en unas dos, tres páginas es suficiente. ¿Okay? Y van con la gente del SBDC en el estado de Nuevo México, les pueden asistir. Las oficinas, todos ellos ayudan con plans de negocio. ¿okay? Pero explíquenle lo que quieren hacer. Eh, cinco... Uh, Mucha gente me dice, gente, yo quiero comprar un edificio. Y les digo, eh, bueno, es buena idea, pero espérate a ver unos tres, dos, tres años cuando tienes buen éxito. Porque si compras algo, ese pago va a ser fijo. Y te vas a meter en un pago que es posible que no necesitas. Okay? Um, so, this is business sustainability, right? Why business sustainability? Because... Let's say you get the funds you want or you get most of the funds you want. The idea should be in your thinking as an entrepreneur and your entrepreneurial mindset is that how do I leverage the funds to get me to be successful and to sustain my business in the long run? So five basic things I want to share with you here, okay? One is you don't need a completely new idea to start. I was saying in Spanish earlier that uh, I was using the example of restaurants for many reasons. One is we know that the governor has, has increased the capacity for restaurants. Folks can go into restaurants and order that they, in numbers they haven't been able to uh, during the pandemic. 
Um, so, so the idea is that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a brand new idea, but if it's a restaurant, be clear on why it's unique. You know, if you're going to sell hamburgers, why is your hamburger different from all the other hamburger places around? Okay. This is what the lenders want to know. What makes you different? Oh, uh, you don't need a lot of money to start a business. This is a fallacy. A lot of people that start businesses are thinking, hey, I need a lot of money. I was sharing earlier that uh, I, I taught entrepreneurship uh, and I still do. I'm on a part-time faculty with a large community college in the state. Uh, and, I, and I was, uh, uh, but in, in my experience, lots of times folks, I'd say, you want to be an entrepreneur? They'd say, yes. And what are you going to do? Well, this is my idea. I say, well, why don't you do it? And they say, well, I don't have any money. And I, I, I say, well, how much do you need? Oh, I need a million dollars. And I'd say, well, yeah, if that's the way you think, you know, you're probably not going to be able to go forward because there's other requirements when you're looking at that kind of money. What you can do is clarify your idea, start selling your product or your service. And once you generate cash flow, right, revenue, then you start making an argument for what you really need in the future in terms of funding, okay? Um, if you have experience or training, it's important to note that. Any lender wants to know, do you know what you're doing? So maybe you've been an employee somewhere. Well, then share how many years. Preferably it's not one or two months, okay? They're looking for a for number of years, you know, preferably two or three years. They're looking for what kind of training you've had. Put those things down and explain them. They make you a better candidate for what you want. Um, and there is this, this misunderstanding, I think, uh, of how long a business plan should be. Uh, in my experience, which is over 25 years in this kind of work, uh, I have found the most effective business plan is the one that is concise, that is clear, that explains what you want to do. It never is, hey, it has to be 20 pages. You can write 20 pages and say very little or write two or three pages and say a lot, okay? So be clear on that. Uh, five is, uh, as an entrepreneur, you wanna see how your money can be leveraged. That is to say, get the most of it. So uh, lenders are impressed by that. What you wanna do is go in and explain that, you know, if you need a building that you're gonna be renting it, especially if you're a small startup, okay? And that you have a good lease and it's renewable. Um, buying a, a building is, is, is not to your advantage and it's not a good idea when you start because your funds need to go to other things like operating capital for inventory, things that you definitely need, not, not to be paying for a building, okay? So this is how you can grow your business, all right? Um, let's go to theme three. Next. Um, so uh, here we're talking about growth. Um, uh, say it in, in Spanish. El crecimiento aquí en breve es, uh, usted personalmente deberá cesar uh, si está bien preparado para ser emprendedor. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que usted está preparado a trabajar horas que son largas, que son 10, 11 horas, especialmente para empezar, porque no va a ser 8 a 5 diario. ¿Okay? ¿Está preparado para dedicarse? Eh, ¿Qué son tus actitudes, actitudes al dinero y prosperidad? Aquí la idea es que en, en breve usted debe de pensar, yo voy a manejar el dinero el dinero no me va a manejar a mí. Eso quiere decir que muchas veces usted debe ser claro en la diferencia en lo que necesito y en lo que quiero. Si yo necesito inventario, tengo que gastar dinero. Si yo quiero ir a un concierto, eso es muy diferente, ¿no? Y luego, últimamente, es, uh, hay que familiarizarse con la mentalidad empresarial. Hay muchos libros hay clases que puede tomar, pero la idea aquí es piense como emprendedor eh, y lee, debe leer los libros que están escritos, ¿ok? Eh, que sean en inglés y español, que sean en inglés. Vayan al internet y busquen libros que, que le ayuden, ¿ok? Uh, here our saying uh, is, is sustainability was 
previously we were talking about, we're talking about growth. And then in the next several slides, we'll talk about really a, a very central topic to this workshop, which is loans, okay, or, or, or funding, capital, okay? So just briefly, um, as you grow, because any, anyone that's investing in you wants to know that, or hopefully wants uh, to, to hear from you that you intend to grow with the funding they're providing, uh, right? And so um, share with them that you've, that you've prepared yourself to be an entrepreneur. You know, share with them what your attitudes for money and, and prosperity, what are they? Uh, share with them that you seek to develop an entrepreneurial mindset. There are classes at community colleges. There are classes at universities. If you, that's not for you, go online, uh, Google or go on YouTube and you'll see there are many entrepreneurs just willing to share your ideas, okay? Their ideas with you. Or go visit an entrepreneur. If you're starting a restaurant, go talk to somebody who owns a restaurant. Ask them what's worked for them. Ask them what has not worked for them. Right. This this is the way you do your personal survey, because you want to be the entrepreneur, the small business person that grows the business. Okay. Next. Um, okay. Here we talk about resilience. So in español, resiliencia. Okay. Y aquí la cosa es en breve eh, que no que no se vencen, eh, siguen para triunfar y intentar de, de ganar, de tener buen éxito. Y, y muchas veces es traten una vez más. Si encuentran un problema, una vez más. Okay? A ver si pueden seguir creciendo el negocio. Um, here I cite Thomas Edison because it's a name, right? Known to all. And, and the idea here is he said, right? What better example than a successful entrepreneur like him? Our greatest weakness is giving up. The surest way to succeed is always to try one more time. So remember, try one more time. When you get somewhat, um, uh, let's say you say, geez, I, I, I'm, I just can't keep going. Remember a successful entrepreneur says, I don't quit. I keep going forward until I can solve this problem. I'm a problem solver. As I solve the problem, I see the light and we start improving our business, okay? Be resilient. Next. Okay, uh, here we come to a very important topic. Uh, it's uh, banks, credit unions, alternative lenders, and SBA. All folks that are involved in the funding on a traditional basis in non-pandemic times, but also during pandemic, let's visit to see, uh, or I'll share with you some of the things that are occurring, okay? And uh, in Espanol, es uh, una tema muy importante, está número tres. Eh, vamos a hablar un poquito de bancos. ¿Cómo, cómo ven uh, el emprendedor que viene a solicitar fondos? ¿Qué son cooperativos de crédito? ¿Y qué son prestamistas alternativas? Ya no he oído mí hablar de prestamistas alternativas muchas veces. Ahora vamos a hablar a ver qué son. Y también el SBA, el gobierno federal. ¿Ok? Uh, so here the idea is to share a little bit of information because as a resource, these folks have uh, the funding. The banks, a lot of the funds that have come down through the federal government that we've heard about go directly uh, via your bank, all right? And if it, your bank doesn't deal with some of these fundings that are available, then go out to the SBA website, which we will show you in the next couple of slides, and you can find out the banks that do. Um, credit unions are also involved traditionally and during the pandemic in providing funds for small businesses. They're, they're an active player and you should know that. Alternative lenders, many small businesses don't know about them, but they should. There are a number of them in the state of New Mexico and you can Google alternative lender and you'll find that what makes them an alternative lender is that they work very closely with banks they are very closely with funding from uh, federal sources. Maybe the SBA has provided them has provided them with with some funding, because what happens is maybe remember those four things I talked about earlier on that model of lending, which is what remember quiz here right credit okay we said cash flow we said collateral and we said conditions 
All right, these folks, I'll look at those, although they may not share them with you, okay? You can be aware of them and prepare yourself when you approach them. And so uh, the alternative lenders use this criteria too. Uh, they are small business lenders where maybe the bank or credit union could not make the loan, okay? But uh, they can, maybe your credit has deems. Maybe the collateral isn't quite what the bank wants. Maybe your cash flow isn't quite what the bank wants. The alternative, alternative lender may work hand in hand with the bank. I know as a, as a consultant, I get calls from uh, banks that say, hey, we can't really do this deal right now. Will the alternative lender uh, in New Mexico, which are nonprofits basically, a lot of them are just nonprofits, okay, that work very closely with these institutions. Are they able to put the deal together? Uh, and, and, and that helps the bank because when you get your back on your feet, then you go back to the bank. So they work hand in hand. And of course the SBA, uh, we'll be talking about the SBA being the federal uh, provider of, of loans and, and grants and working closely with these three institutions, okay? Uh, next. Okay, in Spanish first, then, the, then in English. Um, Bancos y algunas uniones de crédito en Nuevo México. Uh, aquí es para decir que si usted ya tiene un banco, que trabaja con su banco, eh, le, le, le busco que vaya con su banco, preséntese con un funcionario de préstamos o con el gerente y explíqueles que usted está interesado en conocerlos. Ok, y que es posible que quiere, usted tiene su negocio y quiere tener buen crédito con ellos. Uh, también si trabaja con uniones de crédito, es la misma cosa, ¿ok? Es que tiene diferentes nombres, pero uh, trabajan ellos igual. Uh, ahorita especialmente mucha gente me pregunta del programa de protección de cheques de pago, PPP. Ok, la cosa es que eh, eh, esto empezó con el COVID para asistir negocios que tenían empleados, ¿ok? Para, para que no se fueran los empleados, así el negocio podía... Pagar, pagarles uh, el pago eh, y el gobierno estaba ayudando. Eh, lo, que, lo que pasó es que ya terminó este programa, ¿ok? Pero eh, en unos casos raros, hable con SBA, es posible que un prestamista alternativo tiene fondos para ayudarle y es posible que no. Pero a, aquí la cosa que es importante es saber que Uh, esto empezó como una beca, vamos a decir, pero si no usted cumple con los requisitos, es posible que tenga que pagarlo como, como préstamo. Entonces, eh, les, les urjo que prepárense y vayan a hablar con su banco o el credit union, lo que sea. And what I was saying is that banks and some credit unions in New Mexico uh, do the same basic uh, business lending. Whether we're in COVID times or not, I would always encourage you as I did when I was teaching entrepreneurship, as I did when I was on the lending side uh, uh, with commercial banks, that you go in and present yourself and say, hey, I'm an entrepreneur or I am a business owner and this is what I do. This is what we do in our business. Let those lenders get to know you. It's, it's a lot easier to lend someone who you know, you can assess their character as a lender because you work with them before, than if, They don't know who you are. Uh, it'll just take longer if they don't know who you are. It doesn't mean they can't do it, but I encourage you, again, I'm trying to prepare you to put your best foot forward, okay? Whether it's banks or credit unions. Uh, in regards to the Paycheck Protection Program, this is a program that got a lot of press initially. And it was a very high profile program that was there to help existing business owners keep their employees, okay? PPP is the acronym. What has happened now is uh, the federal government stopped it uh, because there's a, a overwhelming amount of money that's out there that went out in this program. Um, however, uh, th there is some exceptions that are occurring that maybe you can contact SBA and see if you qualify for them. But for the most part, it has ended. Uh, if you obtain some of these funds, I encourage you to check with your bank or the SBA or both that you are complying with the terms of that funding for that PPP program. Because if you, if you read carefully into the, the funding of that, you'll see that there's certain requirements that must be made or this converts to a loan. 
And in, in that case, remember we were talking about cash flow? You need to see that your cash flow is adequate to service any future debt, any monthly payment. I'm not suggesting that's what's going to happen, but here's where your skill in preparing yourself comes in and, and asking questions, okay? Uh, next. Okay. Um, Prestamistas alternativas uh, or alternative community lenders. Um, prestamistas alternativas, tres cosas que quiero hablar con ellos, okay? acerca de lo que hacen ellos. Y esta, acuérdate, muchas veces estos existen, uh, yo sé que existen en Nuevo México porque yo trabajo con muchos de ellos, uh, pero existen porque usted no pude tener el buen éxito con su banco. Eh, es posible que apenas esté empezando o que, que por una razón le dijeron, sabes que ahorita no te podemos ayudar. Pero ellos también, los prestamistas alternativos, ¿ok? Búsquenlos en el, en el internet, a ver quiénes son. Nuevo México, ¿ok? Tienen líneas de crédito, uh, préstamo o línea de crédito disponible. Y lo bueno aquí es que los intereses son muy bajos. El interés es 3.75. Fíjese, eso es muy bueno. El, el mejor interés en toda la nación a los Negocios grandes, grandes, es 3.75. Imagínense, ese es muy buen tipo de interés ahorita. Eh, microloans, uh, préstamos uh, uh, de, de programa SBA 504, o le dicen SBA 504. También estos prestamistas alternativos le pueden ayudar con esto. Okay. Son recursos durante el COVID, especialmente el primero. Ese de línea de crédito o préstamo a uh, COVID-19. Eh, aproveche ahorita porque el crédito está bajo. So what I'm saying in Spanish is these, this is the second resource, right? We have the banks, the commercial lenders, alternate, uh, basic lenders that have established criteria for lending uh, that has been ongoing. It's established because they are overseen by the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And uh, as I used to tell my students, anytime you walk into a bank, look at that door. Uh, as you open that door to enter the bank, and it usually says, we are FDIC, FDIC insured for every customer for some amount of money. That's good for you to know, okay? Because you've got guarantees there. And they, they want it also, because it guarantees their, um, uh, their, their deposits, okay? But uh, what I was saying is there are alternative lenders also that are in the community. If you are unsuccessful for something that you don't quite understand, maybe a minor credit flaw, uh, or maybe you had a bad uh, uh, period of time in your cash flow, in your historical cash flow, um, or maybe you're a, a startup and uh, the bank doesn't want to deal with the startup, okay? For some reason, they may say, hey, we just deal with those that have been in business two or three years, okay? Remember, the way you learn about these things is go introduce yourself to your banker. Ask them, would they work with you? So if you wind up going to an alternative community lender, during COVID, they have a product that's very attractive, and that's that line of credit. Uh, it's a COVID-19 line of credit or loan. 3.75%, very attractive interest rate. They also work with SBA. Uh, and they work into the 504 program when necessary, which is basically for folks wanting to buy businesses that uh, require a building, right? Um, so that's them. Next. Okay, so here's a very important tool for you. This is the SBA, uh, um, this is the SBA website, which uh, Leslie's opening now for you. So, um, Remember, www.sba.gov is in English and Spanish. Okay, we're going to open it for you. I think we're going to try to here to show you uh, a few things. Uh, next. Uh, okay, maybe I can try to open it. Uh, next. Let me ask you, Dr. Lozana, are we going, would you like to, uh, let me get back to my PowerPoint, hold on. Okay. Um, would you like to go to the 
restaurant revitalization? That, that would work, yes. That, okay. I think that's a good idea. You just so, tell me what you'd like to open and I'll, I'll get the slides. Mm -hmm. I'll get the yeah. websites up for you. Okay, very good. Yeah, so, so what we're, we, Leslie's mentioning is a very important program, the most recent program. And we have it here. And I would encourage you to go to www.sba.gov on your own when you have an opportunity because we have... Uh, different programs there. There's the uh, PPP program, uh, which we talked a bit about previously. There's also disaster loan programs. And there's the most recent one, which is this re restaurant revitalization fund. And it's very important if you have a business that has anything to do with food, okay, to go and learn how the government can help you with this, okay? It's a special program for COVID-19. Uh, in Spanish, este es un programa muy especial. Si usted vende comida, Tiene restaurante o algo que vende comida, vaya ahí para que les ayude. En sba.gov puede ver la información en inglés o español. Uh, next. Uh, aquí poquito les puse las detalles del programa o the program details because I wanted to show uh, you know, a little bit of what, why it came about. En español es para decirle que es para asistir con las pérdidas que restaurantes han tenido durante el COVID, ¿ok? Y son fondos que empezaron eh, a tener este programa el 11 de marzo. Entonces, todavía está operando. Vayan al, con el SPA o vayan con el SPDC a las oficinas que les asisten allí, ¿ok? Ellos te lo pueden explicar bien. So, program details here. If you own a restaurant or have a food-related business, you should be aware of the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Very, very important program. Came about on March 11th, uh, or rather it's, it's available to March 11th, 2023. Uh, I believe it was, uh, um, came around in May. And the thing is that there's a lot of funding then available to, to help eligible business, keep the eligible businesses who are restaurants keep their doors open. Okay, so um, what you can do is go online to SBA uh, and read the, the requirements, okay? Because uh, there are requirements to obtain this, this funding. Okay, that's why it's called revitalization fund, okay? And uh, the, uh, the SPDC offices have many counselors throughout the state at the beginning of this workshop. I said there's uh, uh, 19 offices throughout the state where, where they can explain to you um, the, some of the details here. Next. Okay. Um, Leslie, do you want to share this here, Paul? Yes, I just want to tell everyone that you will be getting a copy of the presentation. We're going to email that to you. We're also going to email you some really helpful links on what Dr. Lozano has gone over today and also how we can continue to help you if you're looking to start a business, grow a business, expand a business or anything like that. So watch for that email. It, our website is nmsbdc.org. And we have, we have over 30 webinars coming up on all kinds of different topics to help you and your small business, which is very exciting. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. So. Uh, uh, if there's not any questions, boy, that was a that was very quick because we're we are out of time. Uh, last call for questions. I don't see any, so uh, we will see you next time. And we hope everyone has a great rest of your week. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.